Now we are all at our homes and, you know, life is sort of not normal as we have it, but are there still some of the preventative measures that we can do now, regardless if we're pregnant or not, this is just for everybody. Some preventative things may be within a family or you as a person, you know, who might be struggling. Are there any preventative tips that you can give us? Absolutely. Um, for opioid use in particular, I would, you can go on this website called towardtheheart.ca um, and you can train yourself on naloxone. If you go to a local pharmacy in your community or you Google naloxone kits in your, in your community, you can go and pick up a naloxone kit. I don't know how it is in Ontario, but I know in British Columbia for sure you can access it at public health. There's lots of options for that. So train yourself on that. People always say to me, I'm not hanging around anyone who uses heroin or opioids. And I said, well, have you ever been around anybody who's had a surgery and has been prescribed pain pills? And they say, yes. And I said, because there's a probability as well for somebody to forget they took a pain pill and take an extra one too close to the time and have an adverse reaction to it. I've seen it. It happens all the time. So yes. So if you can train yourself or access that, that is a gift to not only your family, but your community. I have one in my house, in my car, in my purse. And um, I know how to respond to an overdose if I see one. And so that's cool. I like that idea. The other conversation, you might be around people who aren't using opioids because naloxone will only respond to an opioid uh, overdose. Uh, if, you're, if you're just around your family and there's any kind of substance use, whether problematic or extremely mild or moderate, um, I would just really work at changing the narrative around how you dress people who are, who are working with, um, who are using or working with people with substances, like just when you're around the dinner table, because lots of the shame and guilt is around how uh, people who use um, are addressed or referred to as, you know, junkies is a common word. And, and, and those terms are extremely uh, degrading. They also take away from the fullness of a human being that happens to be coping with an addiction at this point in time, which would be the more um, uh, sound way to address somebody. I mean, that's a long, that's a long thing, but just like, like work at calling those people out and, and saying, no, that's not, that's a very derogatory term. That's not how we refer to that. Did you ever think of, of, um, how somebody gets there, how somebody gets to the point where that's, imagine the amount of pain someone has to have to neglect their job, taking a shower, taking care of themselves, their kids. Imagine wh how that, ha how that story happens. Cause nobody's waking up and saying, let me sabotage my whole life with addiction. That's not a real thing. And so I think just reminding people that addiction comes from pain, lots of it. And uh, people are doing the best they can. And some people don't have the tools. So just keep bringing up that, that compassion. There's lots of liter literature on the impact of stigma, um, stigma and judgment. And, and lots of people who want to seek help don't because they're so scared of being called those names. And so when you, when you look at it at that, from that perspective, even, even moms, mothers who are in the wine culture, um, have, you know, begun to notice problematic, um, alcohol consumption are afraid to go and, and reach out because they don't want to be called drunk, drunk mothers or something like that. So, you know, be active, be that advocate in your community, at your dinner table, in, at the farmer's market, when you overhear those conversations, um, chime in. I encourage you to chime in. And that's easier said than done too, but um, I have made a habit of, of chiming in. I love that. And I always think the universe sends people who do chime in more of those cases, just, you know, <laughs> it's like, okay, okay. But it's so true. And it's so, um, I think really what we've learned from just being home and suffering this trauma as humanity, right? It's nobody asked for this either, right? 
And when even, you know, and like you said in the beginning, it's not Christine's story or Jade's story. It's like everybody's stories, but our stories do matter. And when I went through um, my psychological therapy, she said, you know, because I was mugged and she said, well, do you blame a rape victim for being raped? I'm like, no, but I blamed myself for what happened to me. So like you said, it's such a complex issue. It's so, but once you're aware that, you know, you can just go ask for help and there are wonderful people like yourself, you know, there's all these lines that you can call, you can email, read up on it, you know, and I think we're not alone in this. And I, that's something that people need to know too, right? Like you're not alone. And once you're honest with your feelings, it's just like a weight is lifted off of your shoulders and you're like, okay, now we can deal with this. I think that first honest step, like you said, be candid about what, what is really going on. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's hard to come to that place. I mean, that's, I've had to go through my own journey on that, but there's nothing weak. Um, you know, in so many ways, I'm grateful for my addiction because it, it, it kept me alive. It's, it's, it's kept me very humble. I wonder, I always wonder what the alter alternative for me would have been if I, if I, if I wasn't able to cope in that way. So I have, um, I don't have an angry relationship towards, uh, that, that period of my life. It, um, you know, I wrote, I wrote in my book, it, it, um, it saved me from a lot of alternative, uh, stuff. And in the same times, it, it also gave me some of the hardest struggles of my life. So it's a little bit of a, a yin yang there, but it's part of my story. And I encourage anybody who's questioning the way that they're coping, um, to not be afraid because it doesn't, it doesn't define you as a person. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you anything that you conjure up in your head that it means about you or it means about your family or your, or your life. Um, that negative self-talk, uh, it's, it might be there, but it doesn't mean that it's factual. And so I think, um, coming to a place where we can really own our, our struggles. I mean, I'm, I'm proud of my, my entire journey with addiction and, and I'm here. So I, I really do encourage, encourage people to, um, own their life. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, only it brings that responsibility piece to it. It's like, you know, now I am responsible for my life. However, that pans out, like you said, you know, just be kind to yourself. You said the gentle, gentle, and you're so wise. And would we be this wise if all these things didn't happen to us? Probably not. <laughs> Maybe, Definitely. but you know. <laughs> no. Sh the shape and idol, the shape and idol and suffering beautiful, beautiful qualities out of, out of us. I don't know if suffering is the only way to get those uh, beautiful qualities out, but that's not really any of my business. I know that the quality of suffering in my life has, has brought me some beautiful, uh, beautiful qualities if I allowed it to as well. And you know, share it and journal about it and, and all those things so I can um, extract all the jewels. Jade, thank you so much. You have such a plethora of information and, you know, thank you. Thank you for all the work that you are doing. I know I mentioned this in the beginning, but it is, it just makes the world a better place as cliche as it sounds, <laughs> but you really do. And, and thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I, I appreciate the platform and the space and the time, you know, for you to hold space for me to share this stuff. It's really important conversations and um, meaningful ones, profound ones, life-changing. So anytime that I can show up in this way, I want to a thousand percent. And it helps for me offset some of the more um, superficial conversations. So uh, it's, imp it's important. It has its place in the world. So I hope that anyone who is listening to this feels encouraged to not only um, evaluate where they're at with their you know coping and and also of course to journal to journal through it all right incredible thank you and what i'll do is i will put in the links below i'll put some of the you know like you mentioned towards the hard.ca and i'll find yeah. some other links for people like if you are struggling and how you can support that way as well so we'll include that in the description well wow. jade thank you so much and we will chat again real soon
Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm.